Hi girls, this is Jessica Boyer and Charlotte Boyer from the Boyer Sisters blog here to share with you the intricate braided updo tutorial. So first off we're going to start off with uh, the front section, the topmost section of your hair. Um, it's about an inch and a half across and you're going to start braiding back up, down the head. And as you go along um, this is a French braid, so you're going to take up little sections of hair um, and just carefully braid them in. Okay, so now we're going to turn Charlotte around so you can see what's going on in the back. I'm going to bring the braid down just below the crown and then I'm going to scrunch it up and then I'm going to start to pull apart the, um, the sections in the braid and uh, just create some volume that way before I bobby pin the braid in place. So you're just going to pull it until it gets nice and poofy. Not too poofy, you don't want a mohawk looking for you. <laughs> that looks good. Okay, so now the bobby pins come into play. Now depending on what kind of hair you have, um, with Charlotte she has very thick, coarse, uh, textured hair. If you have silky hair, you're going to uh, want to be a little bit more careful with the bobby pins and make sure that you uh, secure that braid. So now we're going to do the same thing on the opposite side of Charlotte's head. I should say the opposite side of her part. And we're just going to braid back down across the head. Now, as far as this updo goes, um, I want to note that you don't have to do five French braids on the top of your head. You can do four or three. Well, really, whatever complements the shape of your head and the volume you want to get around your head. So I have a more narrow, small oval shape, and so the more volume, the better. But if you have a more substantial head, then maybe less volume, I don't know. So, um, and also depending upon the type of hair that you have, so finer hair, um, it might be harder to do tons of braids, so you might want to uh, just do three or four. Okay, so just like with the last one, you're going to pull the braid apart and get some nice volume going on top. Okay, so now we're going to start directly underneath that first braid. We're going to braid back down and just follow the same steps that we've been using this whole time. This part honestly is my favorite because you're really starting to see everything come together and just see how intricate and gorgeous the texture is of the French braids. Yeah, it's really neat. Who knew that braids could really add a lot of uh, elegance to your hair? Yeah, that's the thing. It seems like a lot of people think braids are more casual, mm -hmm. but really they can just be done up in such a way so that way they're very elegant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And depending on how curly or kinky your hair is, um, people may not even know that your hair has been French braided, uh, depending on um, how you arrange it just because all those curls hide the structure of the braid. So now, if you have thin hair, I would not do a small little skinny braid like I did for Charlotte right above her ear. I would do a, I would make smaller braids on top and I would save uh, the bigger braids to go right above the ears so that you don't create a funny uh, shape for this hairstyle. Um, thin, uh, silky straight hair tends to collapse more easily than textured curly hair does, so you'll just want to keep that in mind. Alright, this is the last step for the braids, or the French braiding I should say.
Okay, so now we're going to focus on the back and look at all this hair. Okay, so I'm going to take the three side braids on Charlotte's right side and um, carefully take out the bobby pins. Especially if you have silky straight hair, you're going to want to put more attention into this just so that they don't fall out. Alright, so I just kind of haphazardly threw a braid together for Charlotte um, and that's how I secured all three braids. Um, and then I'm going to tie it together with a little elastic band. Um, but again, if you have silky straight hair, you may want to put a little bit more thought into um, the, the braid that will pull everything together. Um, just making sure that it doesn't fall out. Yeah, and also, if your hair is really unruly, you could even put the bobby pins in a more permanent placement. Mm -hmm. So that way they stay in for the whole hairstyle rather than being removed later on. Right, so you'd want to hide those. Yeah. Okay, so Charlotte's going to end up with two braids at the very end. Both are going to be tied off with elastics. Alright, now you have two braids, and what I did is I tucked and overlapped them, and I tucked the ends up into um, the French braids, um, and then Bobby pinned it all into place. Now, if you have longer hair than mine, uh, really just go to town with arranging it and having fun oh, yeah. building up that volume and making it look really intricate and yeah. gorgeous. Yeah, you could easily make even more of a princess coronet. That's kind of what I think of whenever I, I see this braid. It looks like a princess yeah. coronet. And you could even take the bottom section of your hair, braid it, and arrange it up into an updo. I've done that before with this hairstyle and it turned out very elegant. Now, whenever you braid, you usually create parts in your hair, so you're going to want to make sure to hide those parts as much as possible by uh, pulling the braids apart close to the parts, if that makes any sense. <laughs> <laughs> really just pull the hair so that way everything's hidden and just looks blended. Yep. And there you have the intricate braided updo. It looks absolutely lovely. You look like Belle. Yeah, this is a bo boho version of the bell. Uh huh. Too. Yeah. Just in time for the movie, eh? Yeah. All right. Well, thank you all for watching. Bye, ladies.